Hi, I'm Daniela, and this is Jocelyn. Thanks for coming back. Today we're going to talk about some common misconceptions that lesbians run into, as well as unconventional ways to get pregnant, and more about our family unit. Personally, being married to a woman, we get the question a lot. If you're lesbians, how do you have a kid? Especially when two feminine women come out as being in a relationship after being friends for a while, everyone's like, You're together? How does that work? And they don't believe us. And then the other half of the people are like, What do you mean you guys are together? Jocelyn has a kid. Um, like, okay, and? <laughs> What is your question here? And I guess their question being like, if she has a kid, she obviously has been with a man, so how is she with you? Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've pretty much heard everything from, how are you gay if you have a kid? And you guys don't look like lesbians. <laughs> That's like the number one. I'm so surprised. You don't look like a lesbian. I didn't know that lesbians have all identifiers. <laughs> Obviously, you have a child, so you were once with a man, but haven't you ever been in a relationship where over time you grow and grow apart and you tend to want something different? Um, I think that we have all been in that situation where we liked something before and we no longer like that thing or we start to like something else more. I agree. As you grow, your preferences change, and that still applies to who we date as well as what we like to eat and what kind of clothes we like to wear or what kind of music we listen to. So that makes sense. I think the main difference between the foods we like, the clothes we wear, and our sexuality and who we choose to date is that with food, we can try lots of new things and make a decision pretty quickly on whether we like it or not, where sexuality is a slow, introspective process where you're constantly checking in with yourself and kind of explore the relationships you have with people. And some people have a distinct line there and other people don't as far as gender goes. I identify as bi because there are a lot of different things that play into what makes me attracted to someone and gender just doesn't happen to be one of those categories for me. As for me, although I consider myself a lesbian, I do feel like finding someone and falling in love with them really doesn't have to do with gender. You fall in love with a person, not their gender. So anyway, I get off topic. That was the shortened version of how we became moms, but the common thread between most couples is their desire to raise children together. Something that always drove me nuts when I would share with people that I was in a relationship with a woman is I would get responses like oh, Tom, you wanna have kids? and I would say yeah what do you mean <laughs> like well, you're marrying a woman how are you gonna have kids I think it's really important for everyone to understand that just because you marry a woman or someone of the same gender doesn't stop your ability to have children or make a family we are fortunate enough to live in a time where so many things are possible. Comment below with some outlandish questions you've been asked. We'd love to hear them. So how is it possible for lesbians to have babies? Let's talk about some unconventional ways to grow a family. The most obvious route would be through adoption. What better way to grow your family than opening up your home to a child in need? Obviously, there are a lot of intricacies that come with adoption, but it's a great option to help kids out there who need some love and some parents who are willing to give it to them. Another way could be through artificial insemination. This can be done through procedures like ICI or IUI, done either in the comfort of your own home or through a fertility clinic. If you're interested in learning more about artificial insemination, check out the link above. There are also more intricate options like IVF or in vitro fertilization. That's a lengthier process. Some couples also choose to go through surrogacy to have babies. All of these options show you that being in a same-sex relationship doesn't limit your ability to grow your family. There are plenty of options out there. 
The point we're trying to make here is that being in a same-sex relationship does not stop you from growing your family. That's very true because actually my journey into motherhood started with my same-sex relationship. For whatever reason, when I was younger, I always said, I'm going to be a mom when I'm 23. I want to be pregnant by the time I'm 23. Well, I didn't get pregnant by the time I was 23, and I wasn't even trying to. Um, but that is when Bella came into my life, when I was 23 and she was four. And eventually, I did become her mommy. So that is how I got started on my journey to motherhood. You were just meant to be my baby's mama. And she's meant to be my baby. So this is how we became a family of three. And hopefully soon we'll be a family of four. Yeah. If there's any more questions that you have that you would like to know the answers to, definitely leave them for us in the comments below. We're happy to share it all with you. Be sure to give us a like and subscribe. See you soon. In this video, we'll discuss... What are we discussing? Have you ever wondered where... Le where lesbians get babies from? Do you ever wonder where lesbians come from? <laughs> Our dog is sneezing in here. Another option for some couple. Couple. <laughs> couple. I think I got Just it. because you're in a same sex relationship doesn't mean you can't get a dog. <laughs> Dogs need love too. I know. So Just kidding. kidding. Just kidding. Just okay. sometimes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've pretty much. Merch? Pretty merch. We pretty merch. Mommy. The thing to remember about IVF or in vitro fetalization. <laughs> in vitro fetalization. In vitro. <laughs> Inverted fetalization. <laughs> Desi, can you not snore like you're a farting bear? Desi Lou, you snoring again. Ah, the camera! Ah!